Dr. Nina McClellan has been grabbing headlines since she was a little girl. As an eight-year-old, the Alumni Association's Gold Tea honoree for 2014 made the front page of the Toledo Blade when she was hit by a drunk driver and suffered a broken leg while playing on the sidewalk in front of her Detroit Avenue home in 1937. Never one to conform to the norm, Nina asked to be taken to the hospital in a paddy wagon rather than an ambulance because the police are more carefuler. The department was so pleased that they asked to transport her home when she was released. It's a good thing for all of us that the two-time UT alumna has never been a follower. More than anyone, Nina is responsible for making sure that the water we drink in this country is safe. As President, Chief Executive Officer, and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Ann Arbor-based National Sanitation Foundation, she's the person who convinced the government to use voluntary standards to enforce the Safe Drinking Water Act, making sure that every step that took water from the treatment facility to the taps in our homes was now part of the monitoring process. Originally, the EPA was only focusing on chemicals that were easier to detect, rather than on ones scientists determined posed the greatest risk to public health. Her new standards established the types and maximum allowable levels of contaminants, which would be expected to produce no significant adverse health effects when ingested, and applied the treatment chemicals in things like paint, pumps, and plumbing fixtures. Nina's work remains a model for countries around the world. If not for a family that didn't have much money but more than enough love to go around, luminaries like President Bill Clinton wouldn't have lined up to work with Nina. Nina was raised by four parents during the Great Depression, her grandma, grandpa, mother, and her beloved Aunt Fern. Nina met her father only three times. Her mother Lillian took jobs where she could find them, returning to UT to renew the teaching certificate she earned at Ohio State. The woman who spoke six languages was finally able to land a position teaching Spanish in Gibsonburg. Nina attended UT as a child. Her Aunt Fern was one of five math professors and Nina would sit in the back of the class enjoying a calculus lecture. During the Depression, and until her mother began teaching, Fern and UT provided Nina's roof, food, and clothing, serving as her surrogate mom. Selected as the girl most likely to succeed by her 1947 Gibsonburg High School class, Nina didn't let them down. Her mom was an OSU alumna, but that school was too large. The woman who wanted to be a medical doctor decided to come to Aunt Fern's school and major in education. That lasted for one year. Nina transferred to pre-med and graduated in 1951. After taking a job as a lab tech at a local dairy, she became the first woman in Ohio to pass the state Class A operator certification test and became a chemist at the Toledo Wastewater Treatment Plant. She returned to complete her master's in science and engineering in 1961. Dr. Ben Carson's friend was offered a full ride by the University of Michigan to earn her PhD and immediately afterward was hired by NSF as a project manager. NSF had responded to a grant proposal issued by the EPA in regard to developing a drinking water quality monitor. The U.S. EPA told NSF that they would be issued the grant if they hired Nina. They did, and the U.S. EPA got its monitor. Soon afterward, Nina and a U of M faculty member developed a water quality index using a geometric model to report water quality in rivers and streams. Shortly thereafter, all states and water authorities were required to report their water quality annually to Congress using Nina's water quality index. Impressed by Fern's niece's work, Nina became NSF's Director of Research, then Vice President for Technical Services. In 1980, she was elected by, as she proudly notes, an all-male board of trustees to become the third president, CEO, and board chair of NSF. During her tenure, NSF opened its first international office. It now has offices and labs in 40 countries. Nina retired in 1995 after 30 years with NSF and 15 as its leader. She opened her own consulting business. Her first client was the World Bank. Her charge was to determine how to bring Mexico up to speed with the U.S. and Canada for the North American Free Trade Agreement mission accomplished. At the same time, Nina was elected chair of the board of the American Chemical Society. She took on a new assignment in 2008 when she was named Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at UT and served as its leader through its 100th anniversary in 2011. Her career took her around the world and to the United Nations where she represented our country in discussions regarding water quality. She's also given addresses at NASA and testified before Congress. As one would expect, Nina's awards are remarkable, bestowed an honorary Ph.D. by UT. She's a member of the Ohio Women's Hall of Fame and has been cited in the congressional record. Now 85 years young, Nina has no plans to slow down. She points to her mother, Lillian, who at the same age ran for president of her education honorary. It was a five-year commitment. Lillian was elected. 
an amazing woman of great strength who has immeasurably changed our world. Dr. Nina McClellan is the Alumni Association's Gold Tee recipient in 2014.